Hey everybody, Doug with Doug Johnson Productions, and this video today we're going to talk about the trailer that I just got, so you see that behind me, and you probably recently watched the video where I actually went and picked this thing up. Uh, that was shot a week ago, so I've had a little bit of time to work on it. Not as much time, as time as I wanted, I, I, I had kind of a weekend where I couldn't get anything done, but uh, figured I'd give you a little bit of a status update, show where we're at and uh, talk about some of the systems in the trailer that are not just done, but some of the plans I have for the future. So with that, let's actually go inside. First of all, I've got to thank my friend Dave for coming and shooting this. And uh, he's behind the camera today. Uh, he often acts as a director for me, sometimes runs a camera as well. And uh, so anyway, he's helping me out. And I've asked him uh, if, if he wants to participate in this and if, uh, he may ask some questions along the way. We'll just, we'll just see. So, anyway, let's, uh, let's take a quick gander around here. Um, close the door to keep the air conditioning in because it is warm outside. But uh, looking back here, obviously the back, the equipment rack is going to go in the back. And where these boards end is where the back wall is going to be. So, all the equipment, all the main equipment is going to be back behind this wall primarily in this section over here. Uh, just in front of that is going to be the engineering position, and that's going to be my job most of the time. Uh, be able to get to all the equipment and have, and have other monitors and see what's going on there. Um, just in front of that is where we're going to have PTZ camera control and CG, so uh, anything, anytime we need to create any sort of graphics, titles or whatever, uh, that'll, that'll be going on here. These two positions will be facing the wall, the engineer position will primarily be facing forward, but have a swivel chair and be able to rotate forward, side, or back, and different monitors that are available there. Over on this side, you have a booth for audio. So uh, it's gonna be isolated, have a wall um, on the right side in front, and then the wall, main wall on the left. Um, try and keep the sound levels from outside that area down as much as possible. Uh, but still open enough that audio guy can lean out his head and yell, yell at the director or whatever. They need to ask a question or something. So, uh, so yeah, audio booth in the back, and then just in front of that uh, is where we're going to have the playback and replay booth, and that's going to be facing forward. And so, if we're doing things like instant replay or if we need to do playback of pre-recorded video, that will take place over here on on yeah, this what's side. That noise? Yeah, what you're hearing is the air conditioner. Um, it's a little louder than I liked, I'll be frank, but uh, um, it will keep the place cool. It's actually very comfortable in here right now, even though it's been a pretty hot day. Um, so it does keep up uh, with the exterior heat pretty well. And once I get the inner walls up, that will be an additional layer of insulation from the outside as well. So um, speaking of which, you can sort of see how I'm going to construct the walls here. Uh, this is the wall as it came from the manufacturer. And then I'm adding two by twos on top of that. And then on top of those is where the, the interior wall is actually going to be. That leaves me an inch and a half space to run cables. And that's going to be on both the left and right sides. The back end of these is actually going to be op open. So if I need to fish new cables, I can just do that from the back. Just use a, a fish, fish tape or whatever, uh, run it down the side, and then be able to run new cables. All the way to the, runs all the way to the front. So um, future upgrades for the trailer should be nice and easy as a result of that. Okay, and with that, we can actually take a look at the look at the front of the trailer here. So um, past the uh, playback and replay booth on the left and the graphics on the right, we actually have the main director area. So there'll be a desk here with three positions, a technical director, a director, and then a place for like anybody else, like a producer, if they, if they want to have a place to sit. I intentionally didn't design this to be, this one position to be something that's always going to be occupied because it's right by the door and people need, need, to, need to come and go, they're going to be in the way. But uh, yeah, if that would be an, an eighth position. Uh, it should be need to have a full staff of eight for, for a, an event. So uh, behind the front wall with the director is where I have the power systems. And these are mostly complete at this point. This is the first thing that's got the big old label that says PureSign Inverter. That's 
Uh, well, inverters are devices that allow you to take power from batteries and then convert it to 110 volts that you can use to power normal appliance, no, normal electronics. And so this is a 3,000 watt inverter, so it's able to run uh, up to 3,000 watts worth of equipment, uh, which is more than enough money for the trailer. My total power budget on this trailer is roughly about 1,600 watts. Uh, so I had to keep it within what could be uh, delivered by a normal household or business 110 circuit. Tell uh, me about the batteries that it connects to. So, yeah, the inverter connects to these two, ba two batteries here in the black boxes. These are uh, Group 31 deep cycle batteries. I did a little testing and I was able to get about an hour and 40 minutes for required equipment to run a production on one battery. So with two, I should be able to get at least two hours, maybe closer to three, uh, depending on how much equipment we need. The other variable is whether we have solar power available. There are two 100 watt solar panels on the roof. Power comes in through these cables here and then comes down to the solar uh, controller. Yeah, what's that? So that takes the variable, varying voltage uh, comes from the solar panels and then converts it to a rock steady 13 to 14 volts that can be used to not just power the batteries but power things like the inverter. So as currently configured, I can get 200 watts of power from solar uh, in the middle of the day if we've got clear skies. So just help to run everything a little bit longer. Awesome. And then you've got all these uh, little these amp protectors. And yeah, there's, protectors. yeah, there's a bunch of like uh, the fuses here and here and then circuit breakers uh, here, here uh, for different power sources to make sure we're, I can we not only don't blow things up, but also it gives a way to turn it off. So if I want to turn off the solar for whatever reason, hit the button and now solar is disconnected. So, and then restoring it there. Um, the other thing that's important to, for the battery system is the battery charger. So this takes uh, what we call shore power. Shore power is anything that comes in from outside and that converts it to 12 volts to charge the batteries. So. Uh, awesome, it's a bright thing right there glowing. This right here? That's just, just circuit, circuit tester, make sure that everything's working. So this is actually a switched outlet. So I'm gonna have three different, three different types of outlets in the trailer. Um, shore power, inverter power, which is from batteries, and then switched. And then the switch is automatically switched by a device down here at the bottom. It's called a transfer switch. And what it does is automatically switches between two different power sources. In this case, inverter power and shore power. So it's designed such that if we lose power from outside the trailer, it will instantly switch over to the inverter and so we can keep running on battery power until we can figure out why we lost power from outside. That's so. awesome. What about how many circuits you got running? Um, right now, um, there are only, well, only three of those circuit breakers are actually active there. Um, by the time this is all done though, there will be at least three more. Uh, it's going to segment the trailer into at least four circuits. Uh, left, one for the left side, one for the right side, one for the front wall, and then one for the, for the equipment rack in the back. And then the air, air conditioner is on its own, it's on its own circuit here. Awesome. So the inverter I bought is actually technically big enough to run the air conditioner, but that would be pushing it pretty hard and it would exhaust the batteries very quickly. So I'm, I don't think I'm ever even going to attempt to do that. So. Um, What's that uh, red cord over here? This little, little tiny guy? Yeah. Um, that's actually power from the tow vehicle. So while in transit, it'll actually take up to, this is not the final core, this is temporary. It'll take up to 30 amps of current from the tow vehicle in order to keep charge the, help charge the batteries. So it also gives uh, power to the trailer light lighting from the big batteries here. So I can flip on the power and actually have lighting when I'm not connected to the tow vehicle. And that's not, that's not exactly normal, most trailers you only get lighting when, you, when you're connected to, the, to a, a truck or whatever, so. Awesome. All right, so. Um, yeah, everything's been done according to code. It's all safe. Uh, I even have things like battery disconnect, so you can say, just want to use battery two or battery one or battery one and two or if I need long-term storage, switch the batteries off. And so they're not being drained or now, is overcharged. The AC going through that right now? No, well, AC is not. That, that's strictly 12 volt power on that. And so 
that just connects the batteries to the inverter uh, and the, the solar charger or so, and the the uh, regular shore power battery charger. So awesome. anyway, so power systems are pretty much done at this point. I still have to run the actual lines to the various workstations in, in here, but uh, everything else is ready to go. And so I'm um, uh, essentially done with that part of it. So uh, one thing I want to actually demonstrate before we go is what happens when we lose shore power. So I can simulate that by actually unplugging. So this is shore power coming in, and then this goes into breaker panel and then the transfer switch. So what I'll, when, I, when I pull this plug, we're gonna switch over to inverter power. So you'll be able to see just how quickly it's able to make the transition. So here we go, one, two, three. And you saw just a little bit of a blink there. Oh. Uh, but now we're running on battery power and in, in the inverter, and to some degree we're getting power from solar. Now, when we're able to resolve whatever issue is preventing us from having shore power, we'll plug that back in, and the transfer switch gives up to 30 seconds in order for things to stabilize. So if you're plugging in a source like a generator, it allows it to come up to speed or whatever. And so in, the, in from 30, se 30 seconds from when I plugged in, you'll actually hear a little bit of a click. Let's see if I can get close enough to hear it on the mic. And at that point, it'll switch over to shore power. There we go. Yeah, yes, so we just switched over to shore power and that was completely completely seamless you couldn't there's no blink or anything like that, that so awesome so we were just running off of battery power we were running yeah we're running off of battery power just then the ac or what was no just just the lighting gotcha. and a couple of other miscellaneous things gotcha. uh, but it will be just the seamless when we're running any of the video production gear so um and when it double blinks like that are we going to see a blink in video or our machine's going to turn on why would the blink occur? i i'm i'm a, I, I don't exactly know how clean it's gonna be with all the pieces of gear. Um, but fortunately, my primary pieces of equipment, my switcher, my video router, they have two separate power inputs on them uh, designed to have backups. And what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna have the second input on those actually come directly from the inverter. So they're always being powered by the inverter. Uh, so even if shore power is lost, there's no blink whatsoever on those pieces of gear, the most critical parts. So we should be covered. Uh, even if somebody trips over a cord or whatever, or a power goes out in the facility that we're, that we're where we're shooting, um, it should be able to spill over completely seamlessly to inverter and battery power. And then at that point, we can investigate why the power went out and see what we can do to get resolved. And my best estimates right now, in a typical scenario, we'll be able to run on battery for two to three hours, realistically. So, should be in good shape.